Hi, my name is Paul Matthew, and today I'm going to show you how to create a cinematic Instagram story. When creating an Instagram story, you need to think about the story you want to tell, as well as the sound, timing, composition, lighting, and color. So let's dive into it. When trying to create an Instagram story and you're trying to figure out what kind of story to tell, there are three questions you should ask yourself when you have a new idea. Number one, is it simple? Your story should not be complex, should not require a plot, it should not require dialogue, it should be a simple story to tell. Which leads to question number two, can it be told in 15 seconds? The third question is, is it visual? Does it require no sound? Because most people are going to be watching your Instagram story without any audio. So you want a story that can be conveyed visually. And audio should be a sweetening enhancement for those who do decide to turn on their audio. It's like a treat. If you're willing to listen to my story, I'm gonna make it an even better experience. But by no means do you need to have sound to enjoy or understand this 15 second story I'm telling. Now notice that I didn't say interesting. I didn't ask you if your story was interesting because as a storyteller, that's our job to make things interesting. In fact, I like to go and look at the mundane and find out what is something every day that I do that anyone could connect to or relate with and that's what I make my Instagram stories about. Here's one of me jumping my car. Everyone jumps their car and here's to even prove my point more, here's a story about me doing my laundry. Notice that these stories are highly visual and they're driven by motion. That's one of the key elements when you're creating a story is the timing. Everything should be driven and motivated by motion. And luckily our brains are pretty sophisticated and we can connect the dots without seeing information. We can just fill it in. So if you had somebody walking from one room into another, then you don't have to show them walking to that room. You just show them in motion, you cut, they're into the next room. And it makes sense because everything's moving very quickly and you don't have to spend time showing unnecessary filler information. You just need to hit the cues and the key points of your story to convey what's happening. Go find something that you wouldn't think, oh, that's, that's super epic. I, I wanna make that an Instagram story. You don't have to be climbing mountains or doing epic adventures to have a good Instagram story. You can find interesting content from the mundane. And that's what I even like to do myself is look for something that anyone can connect to or relate with and then create a story about that. Okay, so let's, let's create an Instagram story. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is import our footage. So here are some clips I took. I'm gonna just drop those right in. Let's create your sequence. I have a preset for vertical footage. Now let's go in and show you what those settings are. So cinematic frame rate, 24 frames per second, that's a standard film setting. If you want your Instagram footage to look cinematic, I would use 24 frames per second as your frame rate. Notice here your uh, vertical, it's not 1920 by 1080, it is 1080 by 1920, so make sure your aspect ratio is 9 by 16, that will fit any uh, mobile device. I keep my uh, aspect ratio square, uh, turn no fields, progressive scan, you do not want upper or lower fields scan, that just looks terrible, it's awful. Don't do it. Uh, sample rate, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's about all the settings you really need to worry about. So now let's call this coffee insta story. Oops, misspelled story. All right. So now we have a nice vertical uh, footage on our timeline. Our timeline is vertical. Okay, so here are the different clips we have. This is a very simple story about making coffee. And I'm bringing you from the start of the story where no coffee is made. There's 
nothing and at the end of it there is some sort of gratification. I drink the coffee and it brings me coffee joy. I love it. It doesn't sound too interesting but that's our job is to make it quick, snappy, and interesting. Alright so the first thing we have got to grind our bean. We've got a couple clips here where we're dropping it down. Like I said about motion so let's take this clip into here. Uh, you want to keep your existing settings. You don't want to change it to uh, horizontal. You don't want to change it to horizontal. Now notice that this is completely in there wrong. So we're going to go to effect controls and rotations. So we're just going to rotate this 90 degrees and boom, now it fits. Like I said, timing is the one and most important thing that you need. So I want this to just cut right into the action. That felt a little slow. So let's Let's look at what else we got going here. And both of those felt a little slow. Now I notice I have another clip in here. Let's take a look at that one real quick. Let's cut it right, right before it enters frame. So it's about to enter frame there and I just hit Q, that ripple delete. And then land, that's all we need. Let it, maybe let it get into focus there, boom. That's it, that's all we need from that. It has to be very short. But that conveys, boom, motion. Now we're on to our next piece. Okay, so we gotta find, I'm just hand holding this camera. All right, here we go. So now, we're gonna take this clip. Probably, I'm just gonna drag it right into the timeline. Boom. And let's go rotate that 90 degrees. Perfect. Actually, I'm gonna put this negative 90 degrees. I want it to open the other way. That just makes more sense to me. We trim the unnecessary fat. Actually start it right there. Nice sound. Note the sound, it's a nice little beat there. Now, as I said, you your brain will kind of fill in the missing piece. So we can cut right there. We'll see that it flows. It's like it wasn't even there. Our brains just immediately know what happened. We don't have to see all of it. Right there, dumping it in. Keep that rhythm, keep that beat going. Quick and snappy. There. Don't need to hang on that scene for long. You don't need to show the whole grinding process. Just a little, let it run a little bit longer to get convey the idea that hey this is this is a kind of a longer process it's going to take some time to grind it but you don't need to show much more than enough so when you do hang on a clip it needs to be motivated so that was motivated by the fact that that is a longer process I want to convey that I want to convey the spinning um, but I wouldn't want to isolate on it for too long I would, uh, I would recommend that you add some sort of payoff or uh, you drink of the coffee. I was supposed to have that clip in here, but I don't know what happened to it. Must have lost it. Sometimes that happens. So I'm going to end it there with that. Also, I do want to talk about uh, if you take a landscape uh, image video and you've got a subject that's just kind of moving all around in the frame, I'm going to show you quick how to deal with that. All right, so we're just going to I'm just do it in the same project because it really doesn't matter. I'm going to make a new sequence. I'll just call it dance. So we're going to take this dance clip. My computer is struggle busing. Keep your existing settings. We have it all set up vertical. I want to scale that up. Now notice, she's completely out of frame. Even if I were to, I start this frame, perfect frame, and then, boom, out of frame. How do you deal with that? Well, you, it's a little bit of a hassle, but for 15 seconds, it's worthwhile. You can go in and animate that. So, let's go into position, and now start where she starts to move out of frame. So we'll start right there. Mute this audio here. 
We can create a keyframe, and then as she moves out, we'll put the other keyframe, and we will drag that framing to follow her. And then it moves again, so we'll continue following her, follow her back, keep following, keep her in the frame. Well, let's just say that's the end of the clip. We'll cut it there even though that's not 15 seconds, but I'm just showing you how to do this. So now if you play it, we can see the camera follows her, and it actually, I think, creates, at least for dance videos, a really cool effect when you just have that panning, that quick motion. So you can use that to your advantage if you want to stylize your video that way, but otherwise, if you just need to follow a subject, that's the way you can manually animate your center frame to make sure you nail that composition. But ideally, you want to shoot with that frame in mind. But you can turn it into a vertical video doing this method, but avoid that if you can. Let's lighten my face up. So I briefly want to talk about lighting and color. Those are very important and kind of complex subjects that I'm not going to get into too much detail for this. If you have, if you can set up lights for something, that would be great. Uh, there's lots of information out there on how to do proper lighting, but that's going to contribute to what makes your video cinematic. This is more about converting it into a vertical format, making sure it all flows together, but you still want to use principles of good lighting and good color grading to make those happen. So cinematic color grading, it's kind of a complex subject. Teal and orange is a very popular way of doing that. Uh, I'm not going to go in depth with how to color grade, uh, but know that that helps contribute to your final image. And then lighting, uh, a good practice. Uh, if you don't have a lighting kit, you can shoot outside and shoot at golden hour. That's going to give you a very cinematic look. Uh, here's a quick video kind of illustrating that I was longboarding and I created a little Instagram story out of that. It was during golden hour, so I got that nice cinematic looking light. So roll that clip. So to recap, your story, your timing, and your composition are what's going to set your video apart. And then also keep in mind that you need to have good lighting and good color grading for the actual image. You can turn anything cinematic into a story, just readjusting your framing, making sure it's quick and snappy and that you have a good story to tell. All right, that wraps it up for today. If you wanna continue learning about film, photography, and starting a business. That's everything I'm doing right now. I'm learning by trial and error, and I'm sharing everything I learned in my journey. So if you want weekly content that updates you in those topics, do hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all that information. If you live in the Grand Rapids area uh, or West Michigan, you can sign up for my email list where I'm going to be putting out all sorts of awesome events, free classes, uh, free photo shoots for people to participate in. So uh, you can learn more about that in the link in the description. If you like this video, thumb it up. That would help me rank this video and help more people out. So with that, I will see you guys next week.